What's up guys? Welcome to this week's tutorial where we look into editing raw files on our iPhone. Last week I showed you how to take your iPhone using Pro Camera to take raw photos giving you more ability to edit. Now we're going to take an in-depth look on how to edit with Apple's iPhoto software. Now quick disclaimer, this can work for your regular camera photos that you've taken in JPEG photos, whether you're using Pro Camera or you're just using the built-in iOS camera. Anyways, let's hop right into it. Okay, now that you've taken the photo, we want to go into Photos and select the photo that you're going to edit. I chose this one because we have some difference in my sky, good shot shadows that can be brought up and highlights can be fixed as well. So we're going to start by hitting the upper right hand corner edit. And in the bottom, the little knob turning wheel second icon from the right gives us light color and black and white. First, we're going to start with light. Again, hit that hamburger icon to get more details. We can see that we have brilliance, exposure, highlight, shadows, brightness, contrast, and black point. I'm going to start with the exposure. This image uh, might be slightly overexposed, so we're going to move it down just a tab. Go back to the highlights and roll the highlights back. Watch what happens in the left hand side uh, where the building is. If the highlights are turned up, we lose some of the detail in the stucco. Whereas if I bring it down, I have more highlights back there. Be careful not to go too far because it can make those whites kind of muddy and murky. So about here is where I gain most detail in the stucco. Now we'll do the same thing with the right side of the image or the shadows. Shadows, we're gonna move those up to gain more detail back into the shadows. Again, if we go too far, we lose everything we just fixed in the highlights and the image looks under contrast. So right about there is where we have the most detail in shadows, but not overdone. Next is going to be the brightness of the image, um, where you can see we can move it up, we can move it down. For this particular image, I think the brightness setting is fine where it is. And contrast. Contrast is going to make the image more have more depth to it. Just remember that if you push contrast too high, as you can see, the image gets overall too dark and we just lost all the details in the shadows and the highlights. So don't go too crazy with the contrast. Add just a little bit for depth to the image. The next one is going to be our black point. This black point here almost is the same thing as contrast where we have way too much on one side, either the highlights are lost or the shadows are lost. So I'm going to turn the black point down just a little bit so that we retain all of our shadows and all of our highlights. Next, we're going to go to color. Again, click on the hamburger icon and we're going to start with color saturation. Color saturation essentially means how much color of that particular color is in there. How much green there is, as you can see, the higher I go, the more the green starts to pop and looks really nice. If you go too high, we lose too much detail in the greens. It looks very muddy and murky, especially in that pine tree in the upper right hand corner. So we got to be mindful of that. Even though we want nice, brilliant, vibrant color, we don't want to overdo it. Next, we're going to move to the contrast, where essentially the contrast of color. If I turn it all the way up, you can see what's happening here. There's a really def definite line between that pine tree and the blue sky, but it's well overdone. Uh, looks fake. Again, don't go too crazy with these settings. Salt to taste kind of situation. Now, cast is going to be our color temperature. If we move it way up, you can see things start to turn more magenta and yellow. Or if we move the other way, it starts to get more cool, more blue. Since this was shot at midday, uh, I think I'm going to keep it right where it is because that white wall looks pretty white, just like it does in real life. I think we are set with that, so we'll click done. Alright guys, this week's tip. If you're looking to buy a DSLR, don't fret over brand, over model. Go with what you can afford and learn. I started off with a $600 camera and was on that for a year and made some good photos. Yeah, the nicer cameras are nice and they do produce a better image, but start someplace. Starting with an iPhone is great, that's why I produce these, but get into a DSLR if you have a love or passion for photography like I do. That's it for this week, guys. Don't forget, like, subscribe, share this video. It means so much to me and helps out more than you could ever know. 
Next week, we're going to be talking about DSLRs. We're going to look at shooting comparatively to an iPhone. We'll look at some of the settings and how to manipulate a DSLR in manual mode, as well as some of the automatic settings such as aperture priority. Well, we'll talk to you next week. Don't forget, hit that bell button so you see the video posted on Monday evening. Bye.